Now, African Pride is a feature-length film made by RTE News journalist Laura Fletcher. Filmed in South Africa, it focuses on the repression and violence against gay and lesbian people in the country. The crowd-funded film has been nominated for Best Human Rights Documentary at next month's Galway Film Fla. Laura has been speaking to Keelan about the documentary, but first, let's look at a clip. It's an African. If my son came to me and said that I'm, 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 I'm gay, I kill him. I kill him. We always told that being gay is Western, you know, and we decided that since we've been born in these townships, uh, we need to claim those spaces so as much as people might not want to accept, but we are here. I'm not hiding myself, I am a lesbian and I will always be a lesbian. Even if they will try and do whatever it is, you can rate me today, but still I will still remain as a lesbian. Well, I am joined now by Laura Fletcher. Laura, you, you directed, produced, you did everything really on that documentary. You were out in, in South Africa. It's really quite shocking. I suppose we're quite blasé in the West, but I mean, there's very, very real discrimination still going on in African countries and your South Africa is what you focused on. Absolutely. I mean, I think South Africa is interesting because on the African continent, it's probably a bit of an anomaly because there is constitutional protection there. I mean, in 2006, uh, they legalised same-sex marriage. Even before that, its constitution was the first in the world to protect same-sex relationships from discrimination. But there's a real disconnect between the rights on paper and the rights that exist on the ground. And a lot of the language that you'll hear in Uganda and Nigeria and other countries that we've been hearing about where there's um, like state-led uh, homophobia, that language is really being heard on the streets by people. And so those men we saw there, the, the idea that it's un-African, that it's Western, and also the fact that people feel so angered by it that there have been many, many violent attacks. And so in the last three years, um, 20 lesbian uh, women gained men and transgender people have been killed and there have also uh, and, been a number... And simply because of their sexuality? Uh, I, I mean, it's always... Uh, there really seems to be very violent targeted attacks and we looked at attacks where there was, uh, for example, assault and rape and the language was, you know, I'm going to cure you, I'm going to prove that you're a woman. And so this is, this is so really... So lesbians are subject to rape? Of course, rape is, is all too common in South Africa as a crime, but um, that would be the way in which they are attacked. Exactly. So sexual violence is really, um, and, and South Africa has a reputation with sexual violence, and this has come into this as well. And so there have been a lot of attacks and there's been a lot of publicity about it. And actually the government has itself accepted that, that there, there is a disconnect here between law and, and what's happening. And they have a task team. But the, the killings are continuing, you know, and, and since I finished filming, you know, over 20 were killed in that space. And we had uh, six in one month alone in June 2012. We did extra filming last year, but I think that's illustrative. And so what I wanted to look at it this, with this documentary wasn't just the violence, but it was what people are trying to do to try and change to attitudes. It. Because it is interesting, I mean, when you look at South Africa, as you say, they have same-sex mar same marriage, they have the legislation in place to, to clamp down on homophobia, and yet they are as prone to it as elsewhere in Africa. Did you look at, um, you know, right across the continent, it, it's exactly the same attitude in South Africa as you would find in countries like Uganda, where the government have, they've criminalised homosexuality entirely. Absolutely, there. and Nigeria the same. Uh, it, what I found really interesting is the language is so similar, and it's even similar to what we're hearing in Russia, you know, that being gay is somehow Western. And in Africa, they're talking about it as being some sort of colonial hangover, you know. And when I looked at township prides um, in particular as sort of some sort of force to counteract that, I thought it was really a powerful motif because what you have are people saying, don't call me Western. You know, I was born in Guguletu. I was born in Kylie Th That's the posters there. I'm a lesbian and I'm absolutely, African. That's the absolutely. way Absolutely. We have another clip of uh, your documentary, Laura. We'll just take a look at the, I think, this is a clip of a victim speaking to you. When I was stabbed, and even when I was raped, when I went to the police station, it was, it was like something, something was wrong with me. 
and and uh, and I think it's one of the things really that that makes one really to not to to rest till you have to make sure that we, things that happens don't be repeated. So that's, that's one woman who, who was victimised there and the police not interested. Fineke Soldat is amazing. So she is now in her 50s. She was raped. She was also stabbed. But it's interesting. I would never call her a victim because she has gone on to form this organisation called Free Gender and she's turned her living room into the headquarters of this organisation for young lesbian women in Kailicha in a, in a township outside Cape Town. And it was in response to the death of a 19-year-old lesbian who was beaten to death and a trial that took, like, spanned over five years. Some of the accused escaped from prison, they were arrested, there were so many issues. And Finica Soldat and Free Gender mobilised and kind of brought the community in, um, on board and they protested outside the court every time there was a court sitting they were there they were writing blog entries they were focusing attention and really it was it, she is a wonderful example of how she's kind of refusing to accept victimhood and is instead she's an activist and and I think that's really a wonderful example of the type of women and men that I met and, uh, and did filmed. you see any evidence on the ground there of them managing to change people's attitudes towards gay men and lesbians? There certainly is some change and then sometimes you see it rowing back um, and so that's quite difficult. With the case of Zoli Sonkanyana who was the 19 year old who was killed, that was the first case where the judge actually accepted that she was targeted because she was a lesbian and in a previous murder case where a footballer, Yudi Similane, she was well known as she was an out lesbian in her township and the judge in that case asked for a term other than lesbian to be used to even describe her. He was really? so so uncomfortable with it. So it was really quite a change for a judge to say, you know what, this person was targeted because she was a lesbian. And so and they that saw that. And that is a crime in itself Absolutely. under our constitution. Yeah. Laura, congratulations on it. It looks like a super documentary. You're up for the best human rights documentary award in the Galway Film Flash. So that it'll be screened down there, what, in the coming weeks? And on the 10th of July, it's going to be shown there. So I'm really delighted. Um, it's going to be its first screening, not the last, hopefully. And it, I'm delighted that um, it's going to be in Galway, not least because I'm based there a lot of the time. That's where we edited it with Riverside Television. And um, whilst this is very much an African story, this film really came about because of the hard work of so many people. So Galway Film Flow is a great uh, uh, avenue, really, for people to see it and, uh, and to, to, to offer their opinions on, on what they think. You Great. Know? Well, listen, congratulations on it, Laura, and thank you very much for coming in to us today.